Hello, and we're going to install and set up uh, Red Hat Fedora 17. Uh, so for, first of all, you need to download it from fedoraproject.org slash en slash get dash fedora dash options pound sign formats. And the one you want to download is the most compatible. And we're going to just download now and just click on that to download it and then download that all the way. Uh, and then once it's downloaded, um, you're going to say save file and click OK. Uh, but where you need to download it to is the um, into uh, put a folder on your drive called like networking or something like that. Create a folder called Linux and then maybe a folder called ISO so we can download it into the ISO. We use 17 because it has the fewest bugs and has very little problems and it makes the labs go nice and smooth. So we're going to use that one. We're going to use 32 bit, of course, because it's most compatible. So download it into a folder like this and you'll have this one here. And then we're just going to create a virtual machine for the installation. All right, so we're going to click Create New Virtual Machine. And one of the things is I will install the operating system later it needs to be checked. So make sure you click that down here because that's most absolutely essential important type thing to do. So we're going to click uh, next here and we're going to select different ones. We're going to select Linux here and we're going to pop down here and we're just going to choose Red Hat Linux uh, and that's kind of important. We could also choose Fedora instead if we like. Uh, so so there is this. We can choose Fedora here. Um, so go ahead and check, choose Fedora and we're going to say next here and then we need to uh, name it and place it where we want. So we're going to put it on our drive here uh, and I'm just going to put it into the passport here and uh, networking something like that and then let's just go inside of Linux and then I'm going to create a folder for it um, you know, make a new folder and we want to do this otherwise we end up with uh, files everywhere so Fedora uh, 17 um, server for instance something like that right okay I'm gonna say okay and then that's where it's gonna go now I'm gonna go ahead and name my virtual machine Fedora 17 uh, server so we know this is gonna be our server that we're gonna have okay great uh, so now we're gonna click next and I can set this to 50 it doesn't really matter and the reason why it doesn't matter is because um, I can store this as a single file um, the reason it doesn't matter is it expands out so it's not a problem it will actually be extremely small and only if you use up the 50 gigs is going to be an issue uh, and then we can also customize the hardware so one gig of memory will get us by but we can actually go higher than that so we can take this up to about two gigs of RAM something like that and processors are fine for a single processor new CD uh, we're going to actually say here's we're going to set it here so we're going to say ISO we're going to say browse and then we're going to go over to our Linux drive where our ISOs were and we're just going to pop in the Fedora 17 32 uh, bit alright so there we go and then I would say virtual CD on our drive awesome um, this is going to be a floppy so we auto detect now this adapter network must be set to bridged so set that to bridge and we're going to replicate the physical network connection state so that's important uh, if you don't do that it won't work for our networking um, USB is fine, sound card is fine, printer is fine, display is fine, we can't do accelerate 3 graphics because we're using ATI cards um, alright so that's all good to go okay so we're going to say finish uh, if you're using NVIDIA you can do accelerate uh, but we don't have that so uh, finish all right, cool. And then now we're ready to go. I can double click it or I can click play virtual machine. So I'm just going to double click it right now. All right. And we're going to choose to install it. Usually works best. Or at least we're going to try to. <laughs> Sorry, trying to resize this. It doesn't want to resize. Okay, fine. Anyways, select enter on the first one there, the install. You just hit the enter key and it's the first one that's selected and it'll automatically go into installation. So press install process or if you just wait for a second it'll do it too. Hit enter and make it go faster. 
All right, and we just let this thing compute. It's thinking about it. It's going to enlarge the screen. Sorry, I tried to enlarge it earlier, and it won't let me. And now it's just a waiting process. Not much of one. As you can see, it goes pretty quick. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to have to do is scroll. I mean, that's just the only way around it. Um, so if you notice, I come down here like so, and there's a button down here. Uh, you can't see it. Um, unfortunately, you need to expand your window to actually see it. Sometimes you can see it if you do that. Sometimes you can't. In my case, you can't, which is really annoying. And this is a problem with the virtual machine. Um, but if I can only get down there. All right, I'm clicking blind. Maybe I can click it that way. Also, a lot of times you can get away with using tab in order to find your way around the stuff. So, you know. so I just tabbed and hit enter to make it go OK, since I can't see it on the screen. <sighs> Very frustrating. Um, but we're going to do here uh, basic storage, typical in storage environment, whatever. Um, we're not doing SANS or anything crazy like that. So we're, we're not going to do... Um, it's not crazy. It's awesome, but you know, regardless, we're not doing that. Um, okay, we hit enter. All right, I'm going to U.S. keyboard. So just hit tab again. Hit enter. Oh, my mistake. I need a tab three times and hit enter. All right, and it says, ask you the scary question. It says, hey, do you want to get rid of all the information in your drive? Well, this is the virtual drive, and it's not your actual hard drive. So you can say yes, discard any data. So it's okay. Don't worry about it. All right. And then I'm just going to come over here. Localhost.login main is fine. And I just kind of hit tab like three times and then hit enter. Eastern Standard Time is what we want. Let's hit tab twice. Hopefully it does what I want. All right, hit tab three times that time, tab, tab. Okay, so you can see it's tabbing up in the corner here. So we just got tab through, I'm tab again, tab down here, tab again to here, tab again, tab again, tab again, enter. Whew, wow. Uh, we're going to set password for the password. Because then that worry, I don't have to worry about you guys forgetting it. Yeah, it's terrible. We're going to use it anyways. I'm just saying tab again. Uh, hopefully on your screen you'll be able to actually see the buttons that are sitting off there. Usually if you full screen it you can see them, but not always. Um, now we're going to use all the space, but we're going to create our own custom layout. So we're going to choose this one here. And I'm just going to tab, tab again, enter. And examine the storage space here. So we got the free space here. It would be so much easier if I could see the bottom of this window. Man, that would be so much easier. Uh, I'll tell you what. Remind me later. Maybe I can make it show up if I mind that. Oh, I can. That makes it show up. Great. Um, all right. So, yeah. Click on remind me later. Create here. Okay, cool. And we're going to say uh, create LVM. So uh, first I need to do a physical volume here. And just make sure you guys can see this. But we have this uh, create physical volume. Awesome. OK, cool. And uh, a few things we need to do with this for this physical volume here. Um, it needs to take up like the entire space, really. Um, so well, actually, what I can do before that Let's create the boot real quick. Sorry. First, let's create the boot. Um, standard partition for that. You might be going, you got to be kidding me. No, it's it's not bad. Let's do slash boot here. There's a reason for this. Fixed size. All that stuff's fine. 500 is fine. 
click OK, and there's our boot. Boot needs to be a physical partition. Uh, and then from there, now we can do our uh, LVM physical volume. Click Create. And this is going to actually be fill uh, to maximum allowable size. So it's going to fill up the entire thing right here. Uh, and we're just going to say OK. So it's going to be the entire drive. And we're going, whoa, what happened to that? Well, we're going to click on this and we're going to say create now. And now we can just create an LVM group. An LVM group is what's going to have the information on it. So uh, let's see, let's call it uh, LV partitions maybe. Group? I don't know. All right, partitions it is. LV partitions, yay. All right, so we're going to say add here. And, and then we can start giving it different names. Like, for instance, I can have this be something like that. And it's going to be LV root, maybe. Yay, LV root. And we can say how big we want it. And maybe this thing is going to be like 10 gigs, for instance. It's a good number. We we'll say OK to that. We're going to say add here again. And we're going to come over and make another one. Okay, uh, next I'm going to say, uh, let's just do a home directory, and let's make it like, I don't know, you're going to use this a lot though. Um, Alright, let's just do LV home, like so, and let's just say it's 15 gigs. Alright, click OK, click add. Okay, and then now we're going to go over and choose to do the var. Var is really important. This is where you put all your servers. Okay, LV var. Var should be something like, oh, since it holds servers, let's make it 15 gigs too. So let's just do boom, 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 something of that nature. Okay, so we got about roughly 10 gigs left over. We need to create some other partitions though. So it's not we're not done. We're now the woods here. So one of the things we need to do is create a temporary directory. Temporary directory, maybe something like two gigs for it. Doesn't need to be very big. And then I can add another one. Oh sorry, let me edit that and say LV temp so that way we know what it is here. And this just helps just because. Yeah, TMP, it could type TEMP, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, add. Uh, and then, you know, you can add other partitions if you want, like opt, etc. So, you know, if you're doing something like Oracle, that matters. We're not doing that. Um, we do need to swap one, though. Uh, that That is important. So, one of the type of partitions we're going to need, sorry, is come over here and set this to swap. And swap size is going to be roughly about 2.5 gigs. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh. That should be 2,500. Sorry. My mistake. And we still have some room left over. Uh, but we have all our partitions that we really need uh, that are real important. So what we're going to do here is come in. And um, we, we might want to name this LV swap so we know what one it is. Just this makes it easier when we go back to see the LVMs later on. Uh, but anyways, over here in slash root, we can expand this out and uh, make it take the max size here. So if we put in 16, 1, 2, 8, it takes up the remaining space. And so now we have filled up all the space on this partition. So it's kind of an organic process, but you get it eventually. Um, and there we go. Cool. Now I'm going to say OK to that. Illegal characters. Okay. Oh, I got a space in here. Uh, sorry for the name. Didn't like that. Okay, so there's layout. I'm going to click create. 
Okay. I'm sorry. And that's essentially the entire drive. Okay. So now we've laid out this whole drive. The whole drive is now filled completely. As you can see, we've filled up the whole thing with our different partitions here. And I had to tab several times. Uh in order to do that. So cuz I couldn't reach it down here on the bottom, it was off the screen again. So I had to tab to it. Um to get it. And so I started hitting tab key several times to get to, to reach it. I've been used to have this problem. Okay, I'm not going to bother with the bootloader password. Alright, so as you see, again, I cannot click the very thing I need to click on, as always. So, tab, 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 enter. Okay, awesome. <laughs> uh, we're going to do lead us on graphical desktop, um, but we're going to have to choose some other things besides that right here because we've got to choose between the different ones here, and we need to uh, set it up for some things. So we can add additional software repositories. Uh, sorry, not that one. Uh, And we can customize now if need be to, which I believe we need to do. If I remember right. All right. So again, I'm just going to tab, 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 tab. I think. Okay. There we go. And that took me to the next screen. Um, and then from there, I'm gonna just I'm gonna choose KDE also because I want it there. It's nice. Um, applications. Yeah, we got several here, some of which we really don't need. Cool, but we don't really need it. Um, but besides that, there's stuff like development. Now, development we really need, um, and may not sound like you would need it, but you really do need it. And this one's nice here too. Fedora, Packager, uh, GNOME software development. Yes, we'll need that. Uh, I don't know if we need Java development. I don't think we do. Sure, why not? But we will need this. Um, and then servers. Uh, we'll need a lot of these here. So DNS, directory server. FTP, mail server, MySQL database, uh, network server, uh, we can do a new server, uh, we can't do PostgreSQL if we do MySQL, uh, just let you know that, web server, Windows server, Samba for that one there. So this gives you like all the servers you need really. Um, and cloud's cool, uh, it's just we don't, we're not going to be doing cloud, so, uh, but if you want to install that I guess you could. All right, so start tabbing through again. Uh, oh yeah, and then base system. Let's see if there's anything in here that's real important. Uh, system tools, yeah, we need those. So yeah, I guess that doesn't matter. Um, see legacy fonts, I could care. All right, uh, and then languages, yeah, we're fine. Okay.
Unfortunately, I didn't hit the magical one. So we'll need to do this again. Wow. Development, libraries, development tools, uh, Fedora Packager, Fedora Clips, Gnome Software, KDE, Web Development, uh, Made New Java, I don't know. Um, let's definitely do these here. Okay, and then the base system here. Uh, we need system tools. All right, back to the frustration here. All right, so it's just tab a few times because you get to the second tab there, it'll take you back to the previous screen. This is quite difficult. We need the create repo because that's one of our labs, so we'll need that. Uh, I'm just going through here. I used to look. Uh, 7Z is nice to have. Just go ahead and put that in there. You can easily see you using that. Um, I think that's pretty much everything that we really need. Okay. Okay. All right. So that was the optional packages, and then I clicked Tab twice after it went past opt optional packages to take it to the next screen. <laughs> Tricky. All right. Try to. Try to tab. Oh, sorry, didn't have focus in the window. All right, so I just tab twice and then hit spacebar, and that went ahead and launched this, and here we are. Awesome. It's gonna say Linux Fedora. Sure. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it boot up, and now we're just gonna let it load. Okay, and then we'll just need to go through this part now. So we're going to go ahead and do the license information. And it's going to ask me for my full name. Uh, in this case, you're just going to be student. So let's just do student for the username. And your password is going to be a password, which is going to be like the worst password ever. But whatever. Makes it easy for you guys. So that way you can't forget your password. Of course, in a real life, you would never put password in there for your password, because that's the easiest way to get hacked. But we're not going to be worried about it for class. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and click that right now. And... Uh, we can do it either way. Let's see here. The time right now is going to be hour would be two. <laughs> Trying two. Thank you. And then the minute would be eighteen and second sure forward. Alright. That's for me, not for you. Um 
really don't care because this is uh, not gonna matter. I'll just send it anyways. You don't have to send it. You can if you like. Okay. All right, I'm just going to type in password now, and it's going to log me in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is simply just set up a whole um, install for the uh, firewall and the SE Linux. So real quick we're just going to come over here we're going to type in terminal so click on activities and then type in terminal uh, like so. So terminal like that we're going to click our terminal and our terminal is going to launch. Awesome. Uh, now I'm just going to blow this up a little bigger here. There we go. Alright and uh, one of the things I need to do is become root. So I'm going to type in su space dash dash enter, and then I'm going to type in password. Okay, great. So now I'm just going to type in yum install space dash y space and it's going to be policy core utils dash GUI. Like that and enter. It's going to come up and say, okay, okay, I got to install all this stuff. And we'll worry about updates later. All right, so we're just going to let those installs go. And this is the graphical program. So while that is happening, uh, for the install, what we can do is go ahead and start doing our next activity, which is the firewall. Um, and so what I do, if I click on this here, I can now click on applications after I click on the little uh, dash. Well, <laughs> assuming the computer will let me do it. All right, so and from there, um, I can come over here to, I was running a bunch of other stuff. Uh, slows it down. All right, Elias, Dolphin, and also VMware is kind of slow. Uh, and then what we're looking for is not SE Linux troubles, but the actual um, firewall itself, firewall program. Um, sometimes I stick the stuff under other. It's under other for administrative tools. Don't know why, but that is what they do sometimes. So we do need to be aware of that. All right. So it tells us that we're going to be setting up our firewall. Yay. Uh, and then here we're just going to type in password. Again, all right, cool. Right now it's set to disable, which of course is not what we want, but we do need this thing opened up so where we can actually access stuff. So we need to turn on DNS, FTP. Um, let's just go down the list. IMAP here. Um, let's see here. We need mail. We need, oh, why not? <laughs> Network printing. Uh, yeah, we need all that stuff. NFS. Uh, you can do a VPN if you like. Uh, POP3 over SSL. Uh, Radius, we're not going to use it. Red Hat Cluster Site, no. Samba, Samba Client, Secure, W, uh, w uh, which is your HTTPD, which is your Apache, which is your web server. Uh, FTPs here, uh, we need to open up those FTPs. Um, and also the regular web page, yep, you need to open up that. And we can even open up Virtual Machine Management if you like. But those are the main ones. Um, and just need to check all those. And then we're going to say apply. We're going to say yes to that. And then now these um, different ports are open to where we can actually do networking on it. Otherwise, the ports are closed and we can't do the server networking. All right, so let's go ahead and close that now. And we're now waiting on this. Once this is done installing, then we can actually just come over here and click on activities again. 
and it will let us choose the SD Linux, um, which we can't access right now. So we do have to wait for this to finish installing before we can go forth. And it has installed GUI tools here, uh, which is this right here, in order for us to set it graphically. All right, so I'm just going to uh, pause this video and allow this to go compute, and then I'll come back once it's done processing, and then continue on with the setup. Okay, and we're back, and it's done installing. So now I'm just going to come over here real quick, and I'm going to choose applications, and then I'm going to come over here to my system tools, and there should be a new option in here, magically, and we see a SE Linux policy tool which we didn't have before so if I click on this policy generation tool I believe this is the one that we need and I'm not ch choosing the wrong one <laughs> nope it's the wrong one okay uh, let's see here did they put it under other they might have put it under other <laughs> yeah it's under other all right, SE Linux management tool. All right, so password like that. Okay. And we wait for it to do something. Normally Linux is very fast, but running inside this virtual machine makes it run really slow, especially when running on Windows. All right, so we need to set this from uh, enforcing to permissive for the purpose of the course, but I'm going to set it to disabled because if you don't, um, you're going to end up finding a lot of issues with SE Linux itself. So if I set that to disabled though, I can click X and then it'll actually be disabled. In the real world, you'd want to have that set to permissive and not enforcing. Enforcing is extremely stringent and can make it difficult uh, to do things. But with that, um, that should be taken care of. All right.